Hello everyone, this is Callie Raspisi, the Collections Manager here at the Bennington Museum, welcoming you back to Tours at 10. Today we are back in our Love, Marriage, and Divorce exhibit and we are talking about marriage today. Specifically, we are talking about wedding gowns. This wedding gown was worn by Caroline Eliza Cushman, uh, the daughter of uh, the owner of the Cushman Mill up on Water Street in North Bennington. You might have driven by it. It's one of those great big brick buildings. She was quite wealthy, came from a wealthy family, very high in society here in Bennington. And when she got married in 1910, her wedding was big news. It made the front page of the Bennington Banner. The Bennington Trolley Company ran an extra car to help shuttle people back and forth. And her dress reflects that. It is made of white satin. It has Italian silk lace trimmings. Her tool veil also has lace trimming on it. She had real orange blossoms trimming her veil when she got married. She carried a uh, pink rose bouquet and her bridesmaids wore pink satin and also carried roses. Um, so the tradition of white wedding gowns comes from Queen Victoria. When she got married in 1840, she wore a simple white wedding gown and white had been a traditional um, color for women to wear for ceremonial occasions for centuries before then, but it was Queen Victoria's white wedding dress that made wedding dresses um, traditionally white ever after. Um, but they were not universal. So uh, Miss Cushman had a wedding dress that she probably only wore as a wedding dress. She didn't necessarily wear this again. So come this way and we'll show you another one that's quite different. This wedding dress was worn by Mary Colton. She lived up in Arlington, Vermont, and she got married in 1879. She grew up on a farm. Her husband was also a farmer, and she was you know, not a poor person, but not nearly as wealthy as Miss Cushman. So when she got married, she had a more practical dress that she would have worn as her best dress for years after the event. Um, blue, there, there was the, the um, poem about how a bride should wear something borrowed and something blue. That's not necessarily why this dress is blue, though. It was simply a popular color at the time. Uh, the family story is that she went down to Troy to find the fabric for her dress. Apparently she couldn't find anything quite good enough or at the right price uh, up here around Bennington. Uh, it was probably made by a local dressmaker. The style in 1879 included very tight-fitting bodice, these wonderful pleats, piping, um, different trimming, and making something like this was far beyond the skill of most women. Uh, so she would have gone to a professional to have this made. Um, so women in Bennington had, even in small towns in Vermont, Arlington was not a thriving metropolis then any more than it is now, but she was certainly very well aware of fashion and what she wanted for her dress. Um, if you look over here, there are two fashion plates and women used fashion plates like this. These were published by uh, Good East Ladies Book and Peterson's Magazine. And these were certainly available in Bennington and available and shipped uh, to even very small towns in Vermont. So women everywhere had a very good idea of what high fashion was, uh, no matter where they were. So Mary's dress is not nearly as fancy and expensive as Caroline's was, but it is still super fashionable for 1879. There are two more dresses we're going to take a quick look at here. These are both wedding dresses, and again, one of them is white, one of them is not. Uh, this dress here on the left was worn by Anastasia O'Connell. She worked in the mills here in Bennington and got married relatively late. She was 38 when she got married. The average was uh, more early 20s at this time. And when she got married in 1896, the fashion was to have huge sleeves. So her dress has these sleeves about as big as you can get for, for um, 1896. And again, super fashionable not quite as expensive as this dress here. This one was worn by a woman who married one of the owners of the Bradford Mill. So a mill worker's dress versus a mill owner's dress, very, very different. 
Um, and also, she's got uh, this you know, wonderful satin and super fashionable for, when did she get married? 1886, 10 years before um, the other one. So, at this point, the fashion is for very slender sleeves, very tight-fitting bodice, apron, large bustle in the back, and hers also has these wonderful little faux pearls sewn all over it, which are just absolutely fabulous. They are not real pearls, she wasn't quite that rich, but certainly there's a lot of work that goes into this. It also has this wonderful handmade lace here. So I think these, these two are a really good comparison of uh, what was available to different women at the time. And really, no matter when these women were getting married, they were able to go out and buy a new dress for the occasion, get the best they could possibly afford, and find something that was super fashionable for their time using the best material that was available to them. Um, which is still, to a degree, what we do today when we get married. So, wonderful examples, and hopefully you can come and see them in person. Uh, this show is going to be up through the end of the year, and well worth it.